first, J.J. Abrams said you killed this role. You killed the audition. You killed the audition. Is what? that true? Yes. <laughs> we quote J.J. Abrams on this. You killed it. Yeah, that's quite mind-blowing. I'm certain that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you first heard about the, that Star Wars was coming together, is it true that you actually lobbied to be in this film? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I... Uh, I remember I was with a friend and uh, a news alert came up on their phone and they said they're making the Star... There was this. <gasps> they're making the Star Wars films again. And I obviously responded with... <gasps> Who's directing them? J.J. Abrams. And then we both went... <gasps> oh, my God! <laughs> so that was very, very exciting because I know what a fan you are. And mm. so... And I, I suspect you are too. Yes, I am. But... After those films that we all loved, that really captured our imaginations and we held so dear, I didn't think we were ever going to get another one. I really didn't. Neither did and we. Then, <laughs> and I don't think anybody did. I, don't, I, mean, I keep asking people, did you think that there was going to be another one? We didn't think there was going to be another one, and this has happened. And it's with a director who I think we all have loved his previous work, yeah. and we feel safe with and he seems to have a well he does have a huge enthusiasm for it and He's passion and true artistry and integrity and discipline and skill so um i really wanted to do that and that was about six months it went on for and i really was like a dog with a bone i mean you know i said i really want to be in the new star wars movie and i was told so, pick so does the whole world yeah so you pick up the phone you call your agent and yeah. what was that conversation what did you say well there was a series of conversations with various people involved and uh it was really yeah the whole world wants to be in the star wars movie. <laughs> but you got it gwendolyn you well, got it i mean i just kept on and on and on and on and uh eventually i think i potentially i really exhausted some people <laughs> and they they allowed me they allowed me to be seen. I was actually at the season three premiere of Game of Thrones in New York. Wow! And I got a phone call saying, "You've got a meeting for Star Wars." Wow! And you have to go and sign the NDA now, which we sent mm. you to sure. the hotel. Sure. So I went downstairs to the lobby, and I was signing it. And someone came up and said, "What's that for? What's that mm. NDA for?" And I said, "Oh, it's nothing." <laughs> and just popped it and put it away immediately. Secrecy. And then we did it, and then. I flew back to the UK and that flight seemed to take about two and a half weeks. Oh my gosh. And then I had the meeting and then I heard quite quickly, thank, thank the Lord, that I, they wanted me in the movie, but the filming period for Star Wars was over the same time as Game of Thrones. What a wonderful problem to have. Oh boy. But it meant that that process took a couple of weeks and both Star Wars and Game of Thrones very generously worked together and facilitated wow. this oh, amazing great. opportunity. So not only did you lobby to get in, you get in the film and then everyone's got to work around your schedule. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> what I do know is that I spent about six weeks, or at least a couple of weeks, between two and six weeks, not knowing if I was going to be in the Star Wars film because I didn't know if it could work. I, wow. I just, i got to cut to the chase here. Have you seen the movie? Uh, I may yes. have seen some of the movies. But, but can you maybe just tell us, how is it? <laughs> I don't think anyone has anything to worry about. Yes! <laughs> so we've waited, what, to, over, over 30 years. Over 30 years. It is, isn't since, it? Isn't it that is crazy? The, since, it is. With, this, with the old cast, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what was so exciting. I mean, as a fan of the films, to know that the original members were going to be in this film. Yeah. And also, you know, that was reassuring. JJ talking quite openly about how he wanted to honor the authenticity of the films. But to bring that up to date with what I think they've done in terms of being more diverse about the casting, I found that very exciting. Right. About uh, having a Star Wars first on screen female villain. Can we talk about that for a second? Because I know, when we it's saw really out of control. When we saw your costume, I mean it is like the birthing of Darth Vader and a stormtrooper. It's, it's badass. unreal. It is badass. And then you just own it. What was that? I mean, you're no stranger to the armor because of Game of Thrones, but what did well, it feel like when you first put that costume on and you walk on set yeah. to Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> I mean it, the thing is is that it's it's an entirely different thing because it's a literally a completely different world. 
And from what we've seen so far of Captain Phasma, she is encased in armor to the ankle. And so this is, this is a full body suit. And, you know, there's certain elements of that, like it seems high maintenance, it seems inflexible, and it's very imposing that feed into the character. Um, when I saw the costume, I just scre <laughs> screamed. It was quite a lot of throughout the whole process. Because it was a whole long process of not knowing whether I could do it or not, uh, on the first day, I got there and I said, is it happening? And they said, yeah, we think it's happening. <laughs> and so putting on the costume and walking onto the set, mm. and like we all have done, like we all love Star Wars movies, and we've all thought about what would it be like to be in that world. And I, I remember when I saw the first movie when I was six, and I thought, I pr immediately pretended afterwards I was in that world. Yeah. I pretended I was Princess Leia. I pretended I was Chewbacca. I pretended I was Han Solo. I, was <laughs> Han Solo. I pretended to be Han Solo as well. I pretended to be all of the characters. And... To have that incredible opportunity to walk into that world and for that world to be so real. But because the, the sets were so enormous and the attention to detail so particular, so beautiful, wow. that you truly felt that you were inside the world.